Okay, so it's been about nine months since I started self-studying machine learning, so I just want to give an update on my progress. Keep in mind that I didn't start off a complete beginner because I had taken some courses in university, but I never paid much attention in class anyways, and I didn't really decide to get good at this until last December. Around that time, I was getting really bored of programming, I've been doing it for over eight years now, and I wanted to get back to building stuff that I thought was fun instead of always doing practical stuff or trying to solve problems because I find it very hard to be creative when I'm thinking like that. AI was always interesting to me, but I never pursued it on my own. So my idea for my first project was just a simple regression model. I wanted to predict the number of likes that an Instagram photo would get. And I figured if I could get this working, then maybe I could get it working for YouTube videos too. And that would be pretty cool, even though it probably wouldn't work that well. I started off by looking up existing work, and it turns out that there's a lot of very complicated machine learning projects that are just open sourced on GitHub with barely any documentation and usually nobody does anything with it. I thought this was kind of a waste because even if the researchers just want to put some code out to publish a paper and it's very buggy and not very useful, I mean, it's still very complicated. That's a lot of work and you can make fun stuff with it. So that was why I started copying lots of code from GitHub to make my video projects. I think this was not the best for my own learning, but at the same time, it made me pretty good at reading and modifying academic code. It turned out that somebody had already trained a model to predict Instagram likes, so I made my project more interesting by also generating photorealistic faces using a GAN. I finished that project in a few weeks, and I wanted to keep working with GANs, so the big thing right now is deep fake, right? So I found this thing called Deep Face Lab and I made my first deep fake. It's me face swapped onto Justin Timberlake from the social network. And I know it looks really bad, but it actually takes a lot of work to make these deep fakes look good. So for example, when something is obstructing the face, then you have to scrub through frame by frame and mask it out. And also when you're training or when you're merging the face swap onto the video that you want to put it on, uh, there's lots of settings you have to change. And sometimes you'll be training a model and you realize, oh, the settings are not that good. Uh, okay, I just wasted a few days time. Now I have to train the model again. I was messing around with this for a few weeks until I finally produced that Infinity War deep fake trailer. It wasn't very good, but looking back, I could have made that video pretty interesting if I included all the really messed up footage that I cut out and sort of talked about all the struggles I had making this. I was so frustrated by the long training time and the fact that I had to constantly check the training progress to see if I messed up somewhere that I wrote a little script to send the training progress over to Slack. And after I worked on this for a few days, I realized that I don't know enough to make a tool for ML engineers. And for my own workflow, it would probably be more productive to just try to use existing tools like TensorBoard. By now, it was around February and I was feeling a little burnt out. So I decided to go to London to do the digital nomading thing. But then I had to come back a few weeks later because obviously the pandemic happened. I started looking into using GANs to generate music because I wanted to generate a pop song since I'm uncultured and that's the kind of stuff that I listen to. I was having trouble making the music sound good and I didn't want to make a video out of it if it was just a very irritating song to listen to. So I decided to go back to facial synthesis, but I added voice cloning as well. And this was the start of the Billie Eilish project. It actually took me two months from when I started planning the video to actually posting it. And the main thing was that I didn't know how to get the mouth to lip sync to the voice. And so I had to try a lot of different projects. And then eventually I found the first order motion model project. I think a lot of meme pages are using it now, uh, but back then it wasn't very popular. So I was very relieved when I found it. I spent so much time on that video. like. I binge watched hours of Billie Eilish interviews just to throw in some inside jokes. So I was very relieved to finally finish that video and then focus on learning again and not so much on making viral content. For my next project, I knew that jumping from one GitHub repo to another without really understanding the implementation details was bad for learning. So I was just gonna stick to one open source project and I wanted to learn how to actually deploy the model myself because I figured, Eventually, I'm going to be making real machine learning products and I'm going to need to know how to do this. 
I started working on this recommendation engine to suggest new hobbies to try during COVID, but generating text on a screen just didn't look that cool, so I scrapped the project. But what I got out of it was, I need new hobbies to try during COVID. So I started taking online dance classes, and somehow that led to the AI dancing thing. Initially, the idea was to do AI-generated choreography. This was inspired by one of Carrie KH's videos, but it was kind of hard to do. So I started with this thing that would use pose detection to take the dance moves from a real video and transfer it over to a 3D character. And I built this in Unity. I worked on this for a few weeks and I got it working okay, but it wasn't really that good. So I didn't really want to release it. And while I was working on that, I also found this Everybody Dance Now paper for generating deep fig dance videos. And I thought that was much cooler, but I didn't know how to deploy it. And that was still the main objective of this project. Well, a few weeks later, I looked at it again. And it's one of those things where like, if you just forget about the problem for a while and come back to it, it's just really obvious. So I figured out how to deploy it and I salvaged some parts from the Unity app that I was working on before and turned it into Dance God, the deep fake dance video generator. You can download it at dancegod.tech. .tech domains is also sponsoring this video. And fun fact, the real life Doctor Strange, Hacksmith, is also using a .tech domain. Even though the video I made about this was mainly about training the models and generating the videos, the hardest part was fixing the bugs in that Everybody Dance Now project so that I could connect it to my web server and deploy it for you guys to try it out. I realized from this that I'm good enough at web dev to deploy a model, but I'm going to run into a lot of challenges that are specific to the model that I'm trying to deploy. So I might as well just focus on the AI side of it instead of the DevOps stuff. While I was doing all this, I also went through Andrew Ng's courses on Coursera, which everybody says are the best. And I did think they were better than what I had in university, but at the same time, I got the same feeling where I would finish the assignments and quizzes, and I would only have a superficial understanding of the concepts. So I still think it was worth the time to go through them, but project-based learning is just better because there's so many things to learn in AI and even the simplest concepts are kind of complex, right? So I'd rather have a very thorough understanding of one topic before moving on to the next because a lot of those skills transfer over. For my next project, I wanted to implement some of the algorithms myself or at least make big changes to them. This was the thing that I was putting off for a long time. And it was probably because I knew it would take a lot of effort. So I thought about what area I would want to spend a lot of time on. And it was actually pretty obvious. I've been playing video games my whole life and I learned programming at UX through game dev. So I decided to take a leaf from code bullet and start training AIs to play games. Most people use reinforcement learning for this, which also has a lot of useful applications. So I started studying it. I went through the most popular textbook. I watched David Silver's lectures on YouTube. And I also went through some of the more practical resources like OpenAI spinning up and this blog post by Lillian Wang, which I really liked. I found a framework called Jim Retro, which is already integrated with a bunch of games, so it was easy to start training AIs. And the first thing I did was mess with the reward function because it was less intimidating than trying to change the algorithms myself. I basically just did reward shaping uh, for three different games. I trained a Kirby AI, a Mega Man AI, and a Street Fighter AI. And then I started messing with more complicated stuff and I made that AI learns to play Mortal Kombat video. One of the big challenges in reinforcement learning is that it's hard to tell how well your AI is doing. I mean, even if your AI seems to play Mortal Kombat pretty well, like how do you compare that to another researcher's AI playing Mario, right? It's like comparing apples to oranges. So that's why there are these things called uh, ML competitions. And I entered this one by OpenAI called the ProcGen competition. The concept is you have to write an AI that can learn to play many different games given very little training data for each game. So generalization and sample efficiency. I've been working on this for the past month with a few friends and it's really tough, but they set it up so that it doesn't require that much compute power. So you can test a lot of different techniques pretty quickly and I've been learning a lot. It really helps 
to be able to see how well your AI does compared to other teams. And I'm trying my best to win even though the prize is not very good. Overall, I'd say it was good that I worked on a lot of projects to get a broad understanding of the field, but I definitely should have started implementing algorithms myself earlier on. Unfortunately, I had to put off working on real businesses to focus on learning, but I think this was right because I've already built a lot of products and the thing with AI is that it's very easy to come up with ideas that sound good, but it's really hard to actually make it work. I have been slowly planning out a new developer tool that I want to build, but I want to do it properly and right now there's still a month left in the proc gen competition and I'm also prepping for ML engineer interviews which I've never done before, so it's going to be a few months before I start making startup videos again but I want to get back into it. I'm very, very lucky that I can be picky and only take the jobs that I'm actually interested in. And a big reason for that is thanks to sponsors like .tech Domains. I really like promoting these guys because I want to encourage you to build something on your own. And maybe you'll want a short and relevant domain name for your project. For me, I've realized that since I'm getting better at ML, a lot of things that are interesting to me might not be interesting to a broad audience, so I don't want to be spending days or weeks making a video about it, but I still want to share it. So I've started blogging over at willquan.tech. My first post is a list of my favorite resources that I've been using these last 9 months, and you can also go to my site to search for your very own .tech domain name. So check it out if you want, and I'll see you in the next video.